easy. It's, it's the top priority. We gotta, we gotta figure that out. You know, obviously, um, we're not in con control of it, um, but he's, he's definitely a priority. We want to resign him. He knows it, that we want him back. Um, it'll be a big part of our future. So, what other areas, Nico, do you think this team needs to improve in order to get to the next level? Um, you know, if if you look back at the, if you look back at the series. You know, we we lost we lost uh, some games on the boards, and I think that's important. Like we need to get we need to get somebody um, that that can help us on the rebounds, um, be a rim protector. I think we need to we need to figure that out for sure. Could you just talk about the season overall? Uh, how thankful you are, how far they went. Yeah, uh, I think the season turned out amazing. You know, uh, if you guys would all sat up and you know, ask me where I thought we would go or if, if, if I would have told you all that we would get to the Western Conference Finals, none of you guys, you guys would have laughed me out of the building. Um, so the fact that we did and not only did we get there, like we, we got there like uh, in style and class. Um, you know, we beat an amazing Phoenix team, number one team in the NBA um, in a game seven who has guys who've been there. You know, our guys haven't been there before. Their guys have been there and we beat them in a game seven. And I think, I think, that adds a lot of character to your team. Um, you know, we ran out of gas and lost to a, a really good veteran Golden State team, but we learned a lot, and I think that's going to serve us well uh, for the years to come. What do you think they learned the most from this search? I think they learned what it takes to get there, you know, because um, nobody's been there, you know, and not only what it takes, but once you get there, it's another level. Um, and, you know, you can see everything on film, but the other thing, too, is that, it's it's a uh, it's mental and physical exhaustion, you know. When you're playing every other day, you don't you you don't have a chance to regroup. You got to turn around and go, and that's another level um, that they haven't faced. And now they've they've done it and got a taste of it. How would you say the perception of this team has changed around the league with the success that you guys have had this year, and what that means for the future of this organization, whether it be player acquisition and how this team wants to define itself going forward from here. Uh, I mean, 26 teams watch us play the last last week. So I think, I think uh, you know, if you look at next year, no, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. You know, um, people are going they're going to see us coming, um, and that's a good thing. And they should see us coming, and that's the position we should want to be in. Even though Jason and and uh, says it's sometimes above his pay grade, how much does how much does he and Luca uh, and conversing with them on? major decisions factor into you, your, uh, your job? Yeah, uh, I think I think from a leadership standpoint, you you want your best player, you want your coach, you want their input, you want them involved in in the decisions. Um, that's important. I was going to ask about that too. What's the process? So you could call it a two-way three kind of, but what's the process of keeping him involved or keeping him abreast when he's also trying to enjoy his office? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that out, but we'll, we'll stay. He'll know everything we're doing. We'll get his input. Um, you know, he'll, he'll, we'll, 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 we're going to talk a lot, first of all, um, and we'll keep him involved. Uh, and he'll he'll give us his his opinions on things, and we'll give him our opinion. And, but he's going to be involved in the process for sure. Even though Jason for a couple of decades, but uh, working, spending the last year working side by side with him, what's the thing that most impressed you about what the staff did this year? Well, one, as, uh, they were amazing. Um, I think you know, I think it's important that people know that Jason is like a he's like a an office guy. <laughs> Like he, he lives in the office. He's constantly here watching film. Um, I think a lot of ex players don't really get the credit that they deserve in terms of like being like X's and O's guys. And Jason is like a savant. I mean, he'll tell the players exactly what's going to happen. He'll tell them who's coming at them, how it's going to happen. And it happens that way every time. Like he really puts the work in. And, and I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves for putting the work in along with his staff as well. How, how would you describe the on-court identity of, of the team you want to build or the team you're trying to build? And is it something that has grown or solidified throughout the course of the season? You know, I think Jason uses the words accountability and communication. Um, I, I, I think the other word is connected. You know, I think if you look at our team, like we're connected. There were several times during the year, several times during the playoffs that, that we could have fell apart and maybe we should have fallen mm -hmm. apart. But because we're connected, we're able to bounce back. Uh, and so I think, to me, us being connected makes us better um, as a team than the individual players. You know, you can poke holes at individuals, but when we come together as a team, 
we're actually pretty good. Well, what about the way? Or you sorry, you And I just think that's I think that's important. Like right. it's team basketball. Like no matter what, you know, you have your superstars. You have, but as a team, when you're connected, like you can feel that and see that, and right. that that takes us to a higher level. What What about the on court play? Like obviously, you guys shoot a lot of threes. Is, is that by nature of Luka Doncic, someone who creates a lot of threes? Is that something that you believe in? Are there other aspects of the on court play that that you value, or or do you view your vision of this team as being adaptable? Yeah, I think it's adaptable. I don't, I don't really have a, a vision of a style of play that, okay. that I would, that I would want to play. I think, I think um, it all starts with Luca, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and then how do you build in players around that, that complement him? And so I think the style of play a lot of times is going to be dictated by the people that we're playing against and really good teams are versatile. They can play different styles of play. Um, if you only play one style of play, then people take that away then where do you go to so I, I don't I don't I don't really believe in the, the you know hey this is our style of play this stuff. like I want versatility I want to be able to match up with everybody never you having know? done the job before and going through it for the first time how much fun was this how much how much fun was going through free agency and signing Reggie you know, making the big trade at the deadline uh you know even getting through COVID and finding you know guys like Theo to give your team a little bit of culture it just Never having done it before, what what was it like? How much did how, how I, don't, was it? I don't know that I would call it fun. <laughs> <laughs> fun is not the word I would call it. Uh, it's hard. It's hard. Um, it's rewarding, but it's it's challenging. Like it's uh, definitely challenging. But but again, I I'm the type of person like I'm gonna have fun doing whatever I do. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. But when you're going through it, it's intense and it's it's uh, it's a lot. Was it what you thought it would be? Um, no, it, it wasn't. And I don't say that in a good or bad way because I really didn't have expectations. I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. So, so you know, year one, it wasn't what I thought it would be, but I'm enjoying it. And now yeah, now I know. <laughs> how do you embrace that challenge and how can you pull from different successes you've had in other ventures to try and figure this out? Um, I think it's head down and just, you know, keep on learning, um, observing, <laughs> taking, taking from people as you, you know, as you can. Um, and you know it's year one, so now what are we going to do at, for an encore for year two? And listen, I think you know we have our coaching staff now back, so now we're 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 going to come in day one at a higher level than we did last year, which I think is a big plus. Past leadership, would sometimes send different people and like Donnie, whoever would go to Slovenia or would spend time with Luca this summer, especially when he's playing with the national team. What do plans look like that? Or, you know, this, this group. Yeah, we're going we're to stay connected to our team throughout the season. Um, it, it won't just be Luca, though. It will be everybody. Like, we're going to go um, spend time with all our guys. Player development's huge. Um, and then just, you know, just in general, spending time with them when it's super relaxed in the off season. I think that's important. What was the and defining it, moment for this team for you from your perspective on not just how the season went, but how you guys got to this point? What was that, that defining moment for you this season? I probably would say like so in, during COVID, I really think that's kind of when our season turned around when, you know, you, you all didn't know who was playing and we didn't know who was playing. I think at one point we had seven, seven um, people around 10 days. Uh, it was chaotic and fun and exciting all at the same time. But I think that that kind of turned our season around. And then once we got healthy coming out of COVID, um, we took off. Nico, when you break it down. I'm sorry. You might have needed a 10 day GM. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you prioritize traveling with the team? Um, I've always, I believe in like being present as a leader. And so I don't, I've never did it before. I don't know. <laughs> so I just, you know, I'm learning and observance. I think, I think if I'm going to, for me, me traveling with the team one, I get to know the team. I'm also seeing other teams. Um, and just being present, I think that's super important. So, yeah, do I need to go to every game? Probably not. But um, my leadership style has always been present. And so if I'm asking everybody else to do it, then I, they know I'll do it, too. And they've seen it. So, Nico, when you break it down, the Warriors had four all shots. You guys had one. Do you feel like you need to go out there and get some more all shots and put them up beside Luka? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't think it's just about having all-stars. I mean, there's tons of teams and I'm not even going to waste my time mentioning names that have a bunch of all-stars and they're sitting at home watching us play. So yeah, you need to, you need to keep uh, 
upgrading the roster, but I don't think it's about just getting a bunch of all-stars. I think it's about getting people that fit together. Um, and, and, you know, starting with Luca, and people that can fit around him. And I think that's more important than just getting all-stars. When you talk, when along, you talk the, along those lines, lines, along those lines, when you look at the roster, would it be, you know, helping on the perimeter a little bit more depth-wise or finding somebody in the middle to sort of balance the inside outside of the roster? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's both. I, I mean, I, I, honestly, I think it's both. I mean, you always want to add, add depth and then, and then, you know, clearly that the inside part, that's, that's like no secret, like for us to not talk about it. Like, you know, we know we, we got beat up on the boards. Um, and, but at the same time, our best lineup was small. Um, but when you're playing every other day at some point, you know, you do, you do wear down. And so you, when you go looking for a, uh, for lack of a better term, an ass kicker, uh, <laughs> could you find that person in the draft or is it more likely a, 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 a free agent or just a trade? Um, yeah, there's, there's definitely ass kickers in the draft, <laughs> but I think when you look at our position where we're at, we're not in control of, of who we draft, you know, because there's so many, there's 25 people in front of us. And so we'll, we'll have our homework done, but, but we're not in control. Like maybe, maybe that ass kicker goes 24, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, when you're 26, uh, I, I don't think you control your, your own destiny. Out of all the things that you learned and learned about this job and, and came to understand, what is it like, what is the media interviews been like for you, you know, from you know, the first <laughs> press conference? <laughs> Um, a little, a little bit more relaxed, you know, I've spent my whole career being like behind the scenes mm -hmm. and that's, that's like my comfort zone. And, you know, I'm, I'm more comfortable now. I'm talking to you all than I was, um, at the start. So I don't know if that's a good thing. Or not. <laughs> how, did, how did Mark Hughes empower you as a leader to do what you do? Obviously learning on the job and trying to figure this out. How did he empower you to do what you came here to do to try to help this roster become what it needs to be going forward? Um, he, you know, he held true to, you know, kind of what he told me when we were talking before I took the job is that, you know, it's, he's going to let me do my thing. And so anybody can say that, but then I let you do it. And he's held true to what he said. You talked last summer on draft day about how it was weird. Everybody was congratulating you on the job and you didn't have a draft pick. <laughs> what will this next month or so, how different will it be now that you do actually have a pick, even though it's a late one? Yeah. Um, it's real. You know, I mean, we still prepared last last year for the draft, but it was like a, a mock draft so to speak, because, you know, it, we didn't know where we were. So now it's real. So it's not like simulation. It's like you're actually, you know, um, I guess Top Gun's coming out. It's like you're, you're not in flight, uh, flight simulation, like you're actually flying the plane now. So it, it's it's real. Um, that That's really the difference, I think, which is it's honestly easier because you've kind of gone through all the permutations of what it could be now it's real you know you know where you draft at um you know the players that could be around in that area so now you dive into it lucas said that he uh is interested in being involved in roster decisions is that something you welcome and how does that work uh i think we talked about it earlier but uh we just continue to have conversations you know we're gonna have a million things up on the board and is we're gonna we're gonna throw ideas back and forth because the thing is you look at Luca as great as he is, like he has a different point of view than maybe I would, or maybe Finn would, or maybe even Jay Kidd would. So we want to embrace that. Uh, and then we might have a different point of view than he does, and we want him to understand that as well. So I, I think it's a two-way street. I mean, I think you're crazy to try to build a, a roster and not include your best player. Like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, Nico, I know you're friends with a lot of agents players around the league. How would that help you as far as trying to get some uh some of the top notch free agents over here? Um I don't know that it helps you a lot. Um I think I think we'll be able to have conversations with people that we want to have with for sure. But you know in this in this league like you can be friends with whoever you want, but are they gonna come to us for the money that we have for them? <laughs> like, I don't you know I don't think so. I, I I don't I don't see that happening, you know. Um but at the same time um when there's a player that we want and we have the money to afford them, we're going to, we're going to have a seat at the table for sure. I'm going to take two more on zoom. Uh, Landon, go ahead. Landon, Landon Thomas, go ahead. 
Hey, Nico, this being your first season with the Mavs organization, what is something that surprised you or you learned about Luca this season that you didn't see from afar? Well, I learned it early on in training camp. Uh, I knew he was really good. I knew he was amazing, but um, he's next level. Like, he's special. Like, he's really, really special. Um, and I could see that the first week in training camp. The way he can manipulate the game, the way he sees the game, the way he sees things three and four steps ahead of other people. Like, there's only there's only a few people in the league that actually um, see that. And, and, and so – that was that was the thing. Again, I knew he was amazing, but I didn't realize he was like really, really amazing. <laughs> Last one, but Valencia. Hi, Nico. Valencia King with Real Talk Sports. Thank you for your time. You mentioned how challenging this role can be. Outside of covering sports, I also mentor youth and young adults. So I'd love to hear about what you tell yourself when you're faced with challenges and how you overcome them. Great question. Um, I pour, you know, one of the things is I really pour into my family. Um, when I'm home, I try to spend as much time with them, especially with the, with the travel, but I've traveled my whole career. So that's, that's nothing new, but, you know, driving them to the school in the morning, like 15 minute drive to school, like that's where, you know, you get to have the stupidest conversations with, <laughs> with your daughters, uh, you know, them talking about what's important to them. And so that's kind of how I like decompress and get ready for, for the day or days to come. Um, but pouring, pouring into my family, um, I try to spend time with my friends. I don't really have a network of, of friends out here yet because I'm new to the city, but I see my roommate from college is here. Um, another teammate that I play with overseas lives here, actually two live here. Um, I just haven't really found the time to spend as much time with them as I'd like to, but I'll get into that. But I, I think spending time with friends and family, um, that helps you kind of disconnect. We're not we might be talking about basketball, but we're not talking about maps. Uh, so you get to disconnect and kind of recharge and ready for hit the ground the next day. All right. Thanks, Nico. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right.